we are live uh welcome again this is episode two of saints in stem i'm really really excited again today uh to interview two people who i personally know um a lot about this is not only is none other than uh deacon benjamin and <coughs> sister uh, ariana brooks um Aww. two awesome members of uh the lions cross church uh one of the things i know about uh sister ariana is that uh she it was her major is in public health uh, and she got and she went on and got her master's degree in public health too uh which is awesome and uh brother benjamin um got his bachelor's degree in mathematics and um, he, his concentration is in education. Uh, so I'll definitely be asking some, well, we're definitely gonna touch upon that some more uh, later in uh, the interview. I'm, I'm really excited uh, to, uh, <coughs> to uh, talk, uh, to, to find out uh, what his thoughts on certain things are. And so, <coughs> so first question for both of you, um, why STEM? Great question. You want to go first? Um, sure. Um, I always liked math. Um, even when I was in uh, in high school and even before, um, I was very drawn to the study of mathematics. I like the fact that things work out. Um, and so that's kind of where I went from that. And when I got to college, um, you know, I had some great professors that continued to pique my interest in the subject. But also I had some um, people, uh, circle of friends, professors, colleagues that kind of steered me towards education, which is not something I would have necessarily chosen before I went to college. But, you know, after being in uh, the program UAB Teach, education was very, you know, math education in particular was very interesting to me. And so I guess just uh, from a young age, I knew I wanted to be in math particularly um you know that part of stem and um i guess mainly just the whole creation part but also i love how things just work themselves out so yeah awesome and um for me my story is a little different um i actually as a young as a young person a young child i never thought that i would pursue anything stem related um just because I just never thought about it in that way. I didn't think that I couldn't, but I just never considered those options. And so when I got to college, uh, I was surrounded by a lot of, a lot of my peers were pursuing STEM related degree paths. And I was very inspired by their pursuits. Um, and of course my own as well, being a doctor, um, I just realized that there would just be opportunities for me in STEM, uh, regardless of, you know, what direction, what path I went into, I went down, I knew that I would find some, some opportunities that um, I would be passionate about. So, yeah. So uh, I guess quick question uh, for both, uh, for, for both of you. Um, and uh, Benjamin mentioned, um, I think Benjamin mentioned, how he was interested, how he got involved with UAB Teach. Um, I guess what has, I, I guess, um, in what ways uh, do you find that education um, has uh, enabled you to do what you wanted with, do what you want with your STEM degree? Because both, both, by the way, I may, I may have mentioned uh, before that they both graduated <laughs> from uh, from from college. Um, already so um uh, i just wanted to know again uh from brother ben uh i guess how do you see um your concentration um enabling you to use your uh excuse me do, do what you want with your stem degree <laughs> um i mean ultimately I, well right out of college i got a, uh, a job teaching um math in a high school 
So, and I've been doing that for the past two years, um, moving into year three now. And so I, you know, because of my education background as well, the education courses I took, the, um, you know, uh, the certifications that I have, I was able to teach. So, um, I mean, I, I see that coupling my math degree with education has allowed me to kind of do what I want to. And what I mean by that is like, I feel like with most STEM degrees, you need to couple it with something. In other words, if you get a degree in chemistry and you're trying to get a job right out of college, it needs to be coupled with something. Or you're going to be going into maybe a uh, uh, either a secondary degree or graduate uh, school program or something like that, or potentially a um, some kind of certificate that allows you to be marketable. Um, one of the kind of myths of STEM is just this is all in one thing. You graduate and then you're good. Actually, that's kind of a straight up myth in college. Period. You graduate and it's all good. But if you don't really have some kind of, um, if you don't couple it with something that's actually marketable, like I coupled my mathematics with education. Um, you know, it, uh, somebody could couple uh, mathematics with, you know, an actuarial degree or something like that, which was one of the past I was thinking about. Um, unless you couple it with something, you won't really have a chance or a uh, chance to use your degree or you be in that field unless you really couple it with something that is marketable. Um, the flip side of that, of course, is if I had decided rather than going into the workforce, I decided to go on to higher ed, whether getting a graduate degree in mathematics, PhD in mathematics, and then continuing to teach it and write and all that good stuff, which is fine if that's what you want to do. Just know, though, that if you're going to be in STEM for the most part, you need to couple whatever it is you're doing with something that is marketable. And so um, education definitely was a big part in allowing me to continue to pursue something that I love, but pursue it in a way that, you know, it pays the rent. You know what I'm saying? I, I hear that. Uh, <laughs> uh, and also, you, you, you hit upon something, and that kind of feeds into a question I wanted to ask uh, Sister Ari, is you talking about how, you know, STEM, getting a degree in STEM, you know, isn't an, an all be all, but it is an enabler to do what you want to do um, in the field that you choose. Uh, how do you find that, uh, uh, in what ways did, you know, getting a master's in public health, you know, enable to do what, you, uh, what you're currently doing now? And what are you doing right now? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> so um, I'll start by saying right now, I am a clinical research assistant for the Institute of uh, Cancer Survivorship and Outcomes. And um, so basically I work um, for a cancer study, cancer research study, and I help with the recruitment process of that. So that includes a lot of uh, keeping track of participants. We have cohorts of over 10,000 patients that we are currently keeping track of. Um, that includes uh, processing uh, samples, so we take like saliva samples, blood samples, uh, we send out questionnaires, they fill out questionnaires, and the questionnaires are focused on um, basically we, we're interested in learning more about uh, their health outcomes after they have received a bone or marrow transplant. And so that's a treatment that cancer patients um, with like leukemia or other blood disorders receive. And so um, my background in public health um, has helped me to gain skill sets and research. Uh, so being able to, for one, um, talk to patients, interview people, uh, ask questions about their health, um, really having people skills. Um, I think those are very transferable skills. Also being able to collect data, um, manage that data, and um, also uh, learning how to analyze that information to draw conclusions about a person's health uh, profile. 
And so um, my background in public health being on uh, what I do now, um, it's it's been so helpful for me in different ways. I think when I first came to UAB, you know, I thought like a lot of students at UAB, I want to be a doctor. Had no <laughs> idea how that was going to happen. <laughs> But I knew that, you know, I just had a, I just had a dream. And so my advisor told me, okay, you want to be a doctor, cool. So you should be a pre-med student and you should major in biology. And so I said, cool, what do I need to do next? (laughs) And so, you know, register for classes and, um, you know, moving forward to one year later, I realized, wow, this is, this is going to be challenging. I can't breeze through this like I did in high school. And so I had to figure out, okay, you know, what am I doing here? Why, why am I pursuing this career path? Why am I pursuing medicine? And, um, like most people will tell you who are in public health, um, I kind of stumbled in public health. I stumbled upon public health. I'd never heard of it before uh, my sophomore year in college. And so once I um, kind of got into the field and I kind of got an understanding of what it's about, um, I just fell in, I just fell in love with it. I, um, my passion for understanding why people get sick, understanding, um, why certain populations of people are more likely to be sick than others, uh, which is considered uh, a term that we call in public health, health disparities. Um, I realized that, you know, I wanted to dedicate the rest of my life to understanding more about that. And so public health has um, basically answered my why. Why do I want to pursue this career? You know, so um it's been very beneficial to me I at first thought it was just a detour but I realized that you know I've been more blessed um going down this path than I would have if I didn't so I hope that answered your question (laughs) you answered it uh, in a tremendously awesome way um um, so that kept which um and uh it kind of brings me to this next part in a way. Um, usually, I mentioned it to uh, Sister Nina in the first, in episode one, that there's, I guess, this uh, belief in the eye of the public, I guess, that if, you know, you're in, if you are serious about uh, degree in STEM, uh, uh, especially in like, I guess, a science and whatnot, that you have to compromise, that you have to let go of certain, you know, values uh, and, and beliefs um, that are Christian. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, because both of you, not only did you, <clears throat> not only did you, um, you know, get your majors in STEM degrees, you graduated you know, with, you know, with with STEM degrees, what was it like for both of you going through undergraduate and being, uh, being Christian? You want to answer first? (laughs) Sure. Um, It wasn't too hard. You find a lot of other people uh, who also share your beliefs or even if they don't believe exactly the same way you do, they do believe in, you know, they believe in God or they believe in um, Jesus Christ or, you know, they might not think the same way that you think, but um, they have belief, but they're still in those fields as well. So, I mean, you do find a lot of people. um, I didn't find it to be too challenging, but then again, my field is in mathematics um, if I was in biology, say, I, I'm sure I would be up, up against more that would challenge my uh, my religion. The other thing I would say, though, about that is I always see, I see school or college as a way to see how others think. So that doesn't necessarily challenge my beliefs, if that makes any sense. 
In other words, I'm not afraid to talk about evolution, say. I might not believe in it, but it is interesting to see how other people see the world. And honestly, if you can go into college with um, that thought process of, okay, I might not agree with what's going on here exactly, but I want to see how other people view this. I'm not going to, it's not necessarily my place right now as a student to condemn certain things, um, but I'm here just to learn what others think. Um, and so if you think about it that way, then it's really not that challenging. Um, so I'm, I'm, I would say it's not, it wasn't really challenging for me um, because, you know, those two things. One, in mathematics, we don't really get into that much that challenges um, my, that challenged my beliefs. Um, and then two, you know, I'm just interested in seeing how others view the world, period, whether they're Christian or Buddhist or Muslim or what, you know, or atheist or what have you, how other people view the world is actually interesting to me. So I, I guess that's the other part of it. Um, yeah, so for me, um, I guess when I came to college, I came with the mindset that regardless of what happens around me, um, whether it's in the classroom or, you know, just the overall college culture, that I wanted to remain grounded in my beliefs in Christ and um, in my faith. And so, uh, you know, I met people along the way who um, had opposing viewpoints. Um, you know, of course, I've taken science courses where we talked about um, like Darwinism and other evolution theories. And um, I kind of like Ben, uh, I just kind of, I have an open mind about things, meaning I'm willing to learn about how other people think. And I'm also, especially when it comes to science, I'm willing to learn um, what other researchers, um, the conclusions they've been able to draw over the years. And um, the powerful thing about being grounded in your beliefs is that regardless of what you learn, you know, you still have the power to choose what you want to believe. And so that's just been my perspective and my take on things. I think for the majority of my college career, um, I didn't really have the experience of going in any debates with peers and professors. Uh, so um, I would say that that wasn't really an issue for me. Um, I think mostly my, the challenges that I experience when it comes to being a Christian and pursuing a, a STEM degree uh, comes in basically how I respond to disappointment or setbacks, because in STEM, there, there's a lot of that. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of, you know, you can make mistakes, you know, you may not pass every test, um, and in my case, you may not pass every class. And so um, I think, you know, the way that I responded to things, um, you know, was a reflection of what I believe as a, as a Christian. Um, so keeping my faith in God and, and knowing and understanding that, you know, just as long as I, I'm in his will, that God is working, you know, on my behalf and he's has, he has great plans for my life. And so um, I think that's pretty much, um, that's been the biggest challenge as a Christian. And you may have another question about this later on, but that's just been the biggest challenge for me is just kind of responding the way that God would want me to respond to situations versus the way that I see my peers responding to different things. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know me well because yes, we are going. I'm going to um, uh, kind of go back. I'm going to uh, go back to that and um, talk about some challenges. Um, uh, but for now, um, you know, I guess it's easy to kind of dwell on you know what people say about you know you know STEM classes. You know that they're hard, 
you know, they're really tough, you know, you're going to be miserable, but, you know, be miserable and, you know, put a face on it. But putting that aside, what were your <laughs> favorite classes <laughs> during undergrad? For uh, both of you, a uh, question for both of you. Yeah, so um, my, I would say my favorite class by far had to be human anatomy. And um, that class was just so interesting to me because um, one thing about UAB and, you know, we used to brag about this with UAB is that we are um, one of very few school, schools in the Southeast that actually has uh, cadavers in our anatomy labs, meaning we have, you know, dead bodies yes. <laughs> that we use. <laughs> I just wanted to explain what that is for, for our listeners, but yeah, we have actual dead bodies that we use to um, study the human body, and um, that was really cool to me. I mean, we um, had the chance to see, I got a chance to see um, a brain that had Alzheimer's and a heart that was enlarged, um, and um, that was just that was really interesting to me. And so um, I think um, that was like, I think my favorite class. And then also it, it helped me to understand that, um, you know, that this is something that I want to continue learning more about. Um, so it nurtured my passion in um, medicine. And so that was definitely um, one of my most like favorite classes. And uh, yeah, I think other classes included um, this like public health work. Um, I was just uh, last semester in my graduate class, one of my graduate classes, um, I took a class focused on uh, advanced theory in health, advanced health theory. And so um, basically what that entails is we learn about um, how there are theories that explain motives and health behaviors and people. And so we were learning about those theories in that class. And uh, that professor was, um, she's very engaging. Um, she's an African-American woman um, who had a lot of experience in public health. Um, she's been across the world, um, and she's been uh, an advocate, very, very um, powerful advocate for uh, social justice issues that affect uh, the health in Black communities, and um, she just really made the class come alive, um, and so I really enjoyed the, the discussions that we had, and um, so that was definitely another class that I enjoyed so yeah yeah I would say that my favorite undergrad classes whew, there's so many classes I really really liked um <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep the list extremely short um first my favorite math class by far was advanced calculus um it really challenges one of the most challenging classes that I took but it also really show me that I could um, I could handle graduate level material and also I had a great professor in that class where it was a it's a different kind of class in that rather than a traditional class where teachers up at the board you know teaching the students teach the class the entire semester for two semesters so we're up there, we have to learn the material and then we have to teach the material. Um, and that was eye-opening for me. It was, it was, I had been in classes that were somewhat similar, but not on that scale. And so I really enjoyed that class. I definitely love patterns and functions. Um, that was an amazing class, really opened my eyes to um, Pascal's triangle um, and different things that come from that. Um, I was able to really go deep, dig even deeper than what the course material was asking me for. And so that was really cool. That was kind of my first time doing that. 
my first American history class was great because that was when I learned how to get into groups. You know, it's very important. One of the things that uh, that college really is all about is the community aspect. Um, and really, you know, if you can get a good group of people around you, you know, some study buddies or, you know, it just your time is so much easier. Um, and so, um, you know, if you get a good group, group of people around you, and I really had that um, my first uh, history to you. And then I had a really good professor, my um, first American history class. So I really enjoyed that. It was really, really, really cool. Um, and so those definitely the three most, oh, last but not least, uh, one of my education classes that I had, knowing and learning, one of the best classes that I ever had. Um, the professor of that class got her PhD at, at Harvard. And so like, kind of like, Ooh. you know, was, so I was kind of intimidated when I first got into the class, but I really enjoyed the content. The content was really, really, really cool. And so though that class, once again, was challenging, it was also like really exciting to learn um, things, you know, it's always cool to learn stuff that you didn't know, but, you know, to really get into the pedagogy of education is really, really, really interesting to me at the time, or she, uh, my, my professor, she made it interesting to us, because it could have been really, really boring, but we really uh, enjoyed uh, that class, so, yeah, those are my four favorite two uh, classes that I took when I was an undergrad. Awesome, 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 and I do think an uh, interesting aspect of um, what what you what you made mention of is the fact that your favorite class, like uh, a few, like at least the advanced uh, calculus class, um, was a class that was very very challenging, but still, it's one of your favorite classes. Um, I, I did think that's I, I did think that's very very interesting. It kind of brings me around to something that sister. <laughs> Ari um, uh, foresaw that I was going to bring up again um, mm -hmm. the toughest challenges that um, you faced in uh, in undergrad. Um, I guess can you talk? Do you mind talking just a little, sharing uh, what were some challenges that you um, that you had to overcome uh, to I guess, to get to where you are now. Oh, many, many, many. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I first came to UAB, I will say I was um, bright eyed and bushy tailed. I was very excited to be able to um, kind of be on my own a little bit. Um, uh, I guess I had more independence. I stayed on campus. And so um, it was it was a bit of a culture shock for me, uh, being in a bigger city, and um, I would say that for a majority of my college career, I, I can honestly look back and say that I was really not as focused as I could have been. Um, I uh, had a lot of distractions, um, you know, things out even outside of academia that. Uh, really influenced my performance as an undergrad student. And so um, I have I've had friends who um, also were pre-health students. Um, they're actually now, one is in medical school, one is in um, Tom Ritchie School. So they're both doing really well. Um, so we all kind of started together um, on the same track and you know we were taking the same classes together. Um, somewhere along the line, I, I just, I guess I just decided that I wanted to just not be as serious about my academics and um, my performance started to decline. And so um, for a full moment of transparency, I actually, um, I failed one class. It was an organic chemistry class. And I also felt a general chemistry class as well. And I had to retake both of those classes. And so doing that was a very humbling moment. Those were very humbling moments for me because 
uh, prior to undergrad, I was, um, you know, in high school and I was doing really well. Um, you know, graduated with highest honors at the top of my class and I never really struggled in high school academically. And so, um, that was just not the case for, uh, my college experience as an undergrad. Um, now me not doing well was a, a factor of taking like 18 credit hours a semester and then working two or three jobs at a time and, um, not, spending my time well, not time managing and um, things like that. Um, so it took a lot for me to um, to come to the conclusion that I still wanted to pursue medicine. Because after those experiences, I was just kind of like, okay, well, you know, what else can I do? I, I need to graduate. You know, I, I can't just spin my wheels forever. I can't be a professional student in the words of my mother forever. So <laughs> um, I had to figure something out. And so I stopped taking science courses. I start, stopped taking prerequisites for medical school. Um, and well, let me, let me say this really quick, just for the listeners. Um, so, you know, if you're pursuing medical school, medical school, you have to take you know, certain classes in order to get to medical school. That includes eight classes of chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, biology, biochemistry. Um, you have to take the MCAT, you have to shadow, you have to volunteer, do research. There's a, just a number of things you have to do to be a competitive applicant. Um, so it's a very, a very difficult pursuit. So um, I kind of took a break and I decided, you know what, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pursue it for right now. I'm just gonna focus on getting a degree and I'm gonna move on um, and think about other career options. And so um, that's when I decided to pursue my master's in public health. And so um, while I was pursuing that degree, I, my master's in public health, I had basically I guess a, a come to Jesus moment, literally. Um, <laughs> uh, and I realized the reason why I did not um, want it, did not want to pursue medicine at the time was because I didn't feel like I could. Um, uh. And, you know, I spent a lot of time blaming um, systems and, oh, you know, I'm a first generation college student. It's just hard for me. And, you know, things like that, which is a challenge of itself that it is, but I had to be honest with myself to say, okay, you know, what am I really doing and how can I improve? And I realized that, you know, the mistakes that I made were not to death. You know, I, they were mistakes. I had failures, you know, I had classes that I didn't pass and missed opportunities, but you know, here I am now and I can still pursue medicine if I want to. So what do I need to do to move forward? And so um, I've had a lot of moments of just reassessing and reflection and just really trying to pick up the pieces and uh, figure out how to move forward. And so um, since then, I've um, I've been the president of the Minority Association for Pre-Med Students. Um, I have, wow. of course, uh, pursued a master's degree, um, volunteered in uh, one research lab, got a year experience in that, um, transitioned into clinical research. So I'm doing that now. Wow. Um, and the way that I got that job was just really God in of itself because um, I got that job because of the connections that I made with my volunteer experience. I didn't know that they knew each other and that they were connected. And so it just kind of worked out that way. Um, and so now, um, you know, I've connected myself to mentors and I've shadowed and um, just doing the work that's necessary to put me back on the right path. And so now actually I'm a post -bac student at UAB pursuing a bachelor's in science in chemistry. So I'm kind of, wow. 
going full circle here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, kind of starting over again, but this time, you know, I, I'm more mature, obviously this time, um, I'm more disciplined. I kind of know what I need to do to, to get the grades that I need and that I want. Um, I'm still, I'm sure I'll still have challenges, but you know, I just have a different mindset most importantly. So, um, those were my biggest challenges as an undergrad. And then of course, also comparison, um, because all the while, you know, me struggling through my different issues and problems, you know, I have friends that are excelling, friends that, you know, they took the same classes that I took and they made A's and, you know, they moved on and I'm, I celebrate my friends. I'm, you know, genuinely happy for them. Um, but it does put, I guess, my own situation into perspective. You know, it makes me uh -huh. think, man, you know, I could be there right now. Like I could be a third year medical school student if I would have, you know, been focused. But um, I also had to realize that that was not helpful for my journey either. And so um, I just, I've realized that, you know, God can still do it. The story is not over, you know, and yeah. um, just as long as I put my trust in him and I, you know, allow my works to match my faith, you know, it, it'll work so yeah amen um i appreciate you being uh so transparent i'm i'm, cur I'm, I'm curious to see what um uh what was tough uh what i guess if brother ben deacon benjamin if you can i guess go into some more detail and uh you were talking about how you were taking you know tough very challenging classes um i guess what made them tough and <clears throat> what made them tough for you two words russian professors <laughs> that was... when you go to class and you don't know what you're learning and uh you can't understand what your professor is saying that can be very challenging <laughs> that was very challenging i had some very in my time at the university that i was at I had some very interesting professors along the way. And I mean, it's not just Russian professors, you know, I had Australian professors who I couldn't really understand them either. And um, so that was one of the biggest challenges. Um, <laughs> the thing about it though, is I would say like, when it comes to difficult classes, particularly when you get into advanced mathematics classes or any advanced science classes, um, or you do grad school in one of these sciences, there comes a point in time where you start to realize, hey, there's a lot about these subjects that I don't even understand. For example, most people think that math goes to calculus and that's it, right? They think calculus is this great, is this, uh, you know, wonderful not necessarily wonderful but like extremely challenging <laughs> hard uh thing and calculus is the beginning honestly for uh for mathematics um there are so many different areas between game theory and like topology and top up um and all kinds of uh you know other avenues uh you can go into dynamics, you can go into like um, analysis. There are different types of analysis and whatnot. There's a lot more math out there than you would think. And there are not a whole lot of people who know about it. And what that can be difficult is finding resources to help you in these classes that you're taking. So as you take higher and more advanced classes, and there are less and less people who take in classes like you've taken. That means there are less and less YouTube videos about stuff that you've done. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like it's 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 more difficult because there are not as many resources out there. And then you couple that with you can't necessarily hear what your or understand what your professor is saying, and you got all this weird notation in these books that you're going to be trying to read on top of it. <laughs> you know, it can be 
something as simple as a vector, which now I think is a very simple idea, was very challenging for me to grasp because I didn't really have any basic understanding of what vectors were. And, and it's a very basic idea, you know, it's just an arrow with a quantity on it. You know, it's got length and it's got direction, that's it. But the way people made it sound and you're in college and you think everything is challenging and difficult, you don't necessarily understand how simple of an idea this thing is. So I would say, you know, uh, to answer your question directly is definitely um, all of those things combined, not being able to understand your professors, not having a whole lot of resources out there um, to follow behind. And then straight up just feeling like you're dumb. Um, just like feeling like you should know this stuff, feeling like, you know, everybody else around you is having an easy time of it. And you're just like, you know, I really don't know what I'm doing here, but um, I had to get over that. So I would say that's my toughest challenge. Those are my toughest challenges actually in class. But I would say the toughest challenges in college have nothing to do with class at all or not necessarily nothing to do with class, but it's more external. Like, for example, my hardest year was sophomore year, but that's because I was working 50 hours a week on top of taking 17 hours of classes, Oof. which I don't advise anybody to do now. Y'all need to work. I mean, if you if work in college, if you have to, you know, 100% work in college, you have to. You know, I think everybody should be working like 10, 15, you know, 20 hours a week. There's nothing wrong with that. But trying to work a full-time, basically full-time hours. I had like three or four part-time jobs. You're trying to work full-time hours on top of a full course load. You know, I failed two semesters. I failed two classes that semester. You know, it's it's just, they're not enough hours in the day. And so I, that was definitely one of the biggest challenges. Um, and then senior year, just had a lot of things going on senior year. You know, it was my first time moving out and 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 living on my own. So that's that's a ooh, that's a whole other thing. Now you got you know um, commuting. I thought commuting was bad, and you know commuting, it works out if you work it. I guess I feel like I did miss out on a lot of things and opportunities that would have helped me um, if I hadn't had to commute back and forth. But also at the same time, you know, when you got you got to pay the rent, you got to pay, you know, for this, this and that, you know, school starts to kind of take a little bit of a back seat if you don't, you know, work that out and find that balance. So uh, that's a very roundabout way to saying most of my challenges were external, not actually school itself, but the internal challenges really, um, particularly in the more advanced level classes is just, you know, like I said, not, not wanting to hold up your hand, not feeling dumb. Um, not being able to understand your professors and just um, not a whole lot of resources. I mean, uh, that makes a uh, lot of sense to you. And that kind of brings me into my next um, uh, <laughs> uh, topic um, beautifully, actually. Um, so in order to get your degree in math in order to get a degree in public health, I am fairly sure that you um, that you both had to take what are commonly known as weed out classes. Um, I say weed out class, but I'm fairly sure that you took more than just one weed out class. Um, so I guess starting with uh, Ari. <laughs> uh, oh man. <laughs> how? If uh, if a student were to ask, how do I survive a weed out class? Um, you know, what are just some general must haves uh, to be able to survive a weed out class? Um, you number one, you must have a prayer life. <laughs> like that is <laughs> that's that's just that's just honest. But uh, yeah, in addition to that, um, it's very important to enter a class like this because more, more than likely these students are already they've already heard about these classes like before I took by bi at UAB biology 123 biology 124 organic chemistry those those classes are considered weed out courses human anatomy is considered a weed out course and 
by the time they get to the point where they're taking those classes, you know, they've already heard stories, horror stories about, horror story. <laughs> about those classes. And so I would say enter into this course with the mindset that, oh, yeah, this is going to be challenging, but you can do it. It is possible to get through the class. It starts with the mindset. Next, I would say make sure you go in ready to work because that's what it's going to, that's what it's going to take. You have to be willing to put in the work, put in the effort it takes to get the grade that you want. And so that would entail going to class every time you have class. (laughs) It sounds like a given, but trust me, it's not always (laughs) go to class when you have class. Okay. I've, I've been that student who was not as responsible. So go to class. Um, make sure that you read ahead. So before you go in and listen to a lecture, it's very important that you already know what the lecture is going to be about. So by the time you listen to what is going on, it's kind of like you know, confirmation. Like if you are, you've already seen this information before, you've already seen this material. So now it's like review in a way, but it's more, you know, and enhanced. So do that. And also don't be afraid to ask questions. I have always been a student, um, an, an undergrad, I was a student who was very timid. I was afraid to um, look dumb in front of my professors. And that is a very silly way to think about things because your professors get paid to help you. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, just plain and simple. That's what they get paid to do. So, um, you know, ask all the questions you need to gain, to retain this information. So if you have to email them every other day, if you have to go to all of their office hours, and that's very important to go to the office hours. If you have to do that, to make sure that you understand this information, then do that. Um, also, take advantage of every resource that the your program has to offer. So if your program has a study hall or um, like a like a UAB, the science courses include like recitations or, or um, supplemental instruction, which is basically just like an hour or so a week where they um, uh, just take the information you're learning in lecture and they give you the opportunity to apply that information. So take advantage of that. Also get some accountability. So make sure that you have friends or classmates that actually are going to study with you, not (laughs) goof off. (laughs) Oh, that happens so often. Yeah, I I say that because I was the one who was goofing off sometimes and not even going to pretend like I wasn't. But I learned, (laughs) you know, get some friends that wants to succeed with you. And you all study together, you know, if that works for you. Study by yourself too now. But, you know, it's good to have that accountability, the reinforcement, someone to check in, hey, have you looked over, uh, you know, chapter six yet? Or, hey, have you finished the homework? You know, things like that. That can be very helpful. Um, And then, um, so, you know, as a pre-med, that was my experience with those weed out courses. Um, And then, of course, in my public health classes, in my public health program, there are also classes that are a little intimidating and daunting for a lot of students like biostatistics um, some of the epidemiology courses are as well and um, I think the same principles apply there too you know make sure that you know you're doing what you can to work hard and be on top of things um, and so I think if you do those things you should be fine you know in those same weed art courses weed out courses I know people who have aced them. I know people who have, you know, they've done so well in those classes that the teacher goes back and asks them to be their TA, you know? (laughs) And I think that's, I think that's beautiful. That's awesome. You know, Um, lastly, I would say like, don't beat yourself up. That's another thing. Just know that um, it's a learning process. 
You know, you may not start off making a, a, a 100 on the first exam, but, you know, do what you can do and, um, you know, again, pray. <laughs> so, yeah. Absolutely. And I agree with everything that was said, and I'm not going to add too, too much more, but I would say number one is definitely have a routine. You need to have a routine for this class. You need to have a routine for all of your classes. How are you going to study when you study, you know, where you study, you know, uh, everybody says, go, go to the library. Well, if you are, have a lot of friends on campus who are all at the library all at the same time, and you, particularly if you have friends who you know, don't even go to the school that you go to, but just hang out. No, this happens. You have friends that go. <laughs> you have friends that will, that don't even go to the same school that you go to and they will be hanging out at the library. They just stop by to get some Starbucks. So you AKA got, Club and you have, and you, <laughs> right. And you only have, you know, an hour and a half to finish this, uh, this, uh, uh this essay that you're working on and somebody they just want to text they just want to talk they just want to chat they just want to blah 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 now nah, you can't have that you got to figure out like where can i be if you work well in a group make sure you get you a good group if you work well by yourself then make sure you can get a place for where you can just be by yourself you know if you have to invest in some headphones just so that people will kind of leave you alone you know do that you know so you look make yourself look busy or whatever so have a routine is very important. Another thing is have a good computer, have a good laptop, lap, a, a good, decent laptop, invest in that. Take your refund check money, go down, get you a good laptop. It mm -hmm. is going to 100% change your life if you have a good laptop. Trust me, it really will. Um, I would say if you can teach the material that you're learning, then you know it, okay? you have to get to the point on these weed out classes in particular, where you have to be able to teach the material that you are now learning. Why? Because it's so extensive. Most of these weed out classes, they're gonna put a whole lot of stuff into one course. For math, for math that weed out class is calculus two. I know students who've taken calculus two three times and still didn't pass it. I know people, and I'm not talking about just these are students that are acing all their other classes. But you know, what you have to do is make sure that you know, you know that you know that you know that you know the material. It is very, you can't get around it. That's why there are weed out courses. Um, and then the last thing is uh, Robert Kiyosaki said that it is not the intelligent that um, do well in life, it's the bold. Be bold, you have to be bold. Get up in your professor's face in a nice way now, but like <laughs> what you got to do is you got to show some effort. Like they will, you will be amazed at what people will give to you and help you with and resources that they will give you and grades that they will kind of help you, you know, get if you just put yourself out there. You like, like Ari was saying, go to your, go to the office hours go to the uh, recitations, go to anything that you can and show them like, look, you know, I, at this point, you know, just show them that you are serious about learning the material. I have a, um, a friend of mine who, uh, she got her degree as an engineer and one of the classes that she had to take, she was failing the class, but she was working hard. And the professor went to her and said, look, you know, if you, um, it's like, at this point, I've seen how hard you've been working. And rather than failing you, I'm going to give you an incomplete and let you retake it. Because at this point, I must have done something wrong in terms of teaching you. Well, wow. guess what? If she hadn't been going to the office hours, she hadn't been working hard. She hadn't yeah. been actually showing up. She hadn't been turning the stuff in on time. You know, at some point, you know, if you have, now is that gonna happen every time? No, but at the same time, you show up so much that you, that people, you, you get a reputation for certain things, people will help you. There are some A's that I got that I barely made it, but I got an A because I worked my tail off. 
And I was bold. I was speaking with the professor. I was going to office hours. I was doing different things. So I would say definitely um, those those things that we talked about um, to do weed out classes. I Me mean, personally, I actually love weed out classes. The reason not taking them, but being on the other side of them, because you can say, dang, I did that. So. <laughs> um, wow. I've never heard anybody say that. <laughs> <laughs> I pass Cal too, and I tutor it all the time. So yeah, you know, I love, you know, I was just saying. You, you already kind of yeah we talked about <laughs> study such student. a teacher oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yes um i can't um i think we also kind of hit on this too um yeah. as well Thank so one. yeah um, <laughs> um so ooh. I do actually, I am actually curious to, to the, to, to these, um, uh, to, to this one, uh, from hearing from you, uh, brother Ben, or just a little bit, uh, how yeah. to approach, uh, math, uh, how, how to uh, approach the greatest subject ever. I think you should have a timer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like how much time do you get, got? Get, um, get, uh, if you can hit it in, uh, let's say five, ten minutes. We'll see yeah, we'll, five minutes I think I, I, th I think I can do it, and I can do you a little bit better. I can I can do it in, in less than three minutes. I think I, I think we can be good. All right. uh, <laughs> there is a meme that says that ma uh, English is important, but math is importanter, and that is so true if you approach math from the yeah. fact that <laughs> if you, i mean it's debatable um but honestly the way to approach math is like look for patterns that's it that's the secret i i think I, I i think i just spilled the secret it's patterns look for patterns that's all math is math is patterns literally that's all it is you look for patterns that work on a small scale and then they will work on a big scale. That's it. That's how you approach math. My life has changed. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I have, well, that took like 30 seconds. <laughs> but no, that literally is it. That's, that's awesome. it. Awesome. Uh, so we've been talking about challenges hard classes how do you stay motivated how, how did you um how did you stay motivated and this is a question for both of you again how did you guys stay motivated to, to stick with it you know um to, to stick with public health you know to stick with mathematics i guess what i guess how did you you know continue how, um, how did you continue to have grit through all of that well i i, I just want to i was on a panel with uh, my good friend, Dr. Bowman, not too long ago, and talking to uh, high school students. And one of the things that we talked about, one of the things she said, I thought was beautiful was, you have to remember why you're there. That's how you stay motivated. You've got to remember, why is it that I'm here? And, and therein lies kind of where, you know, I, I will tell my students all the time or any anybody that I talk to because I'm big on college I believe that you know if you want to go to college you want to succeed in college that you can there were so many resources out there for you but at the end of the day it, you have to decide is this is what I want because it's going to get too tough for you to not want it for yourself not do my parents want me to go to college not do I think it's just going to give me a hundred thousand dollar a year job no you have to want it yourself you want to have to want the education yourself and so if your your why is i really love this subject that's a great place to start if your why is you know i just you know i really can see the impact that this degree is going to have on my life and my career that that's a pretty good why as well you know so you have to remember your why that's how you're going to stay motivated if you, you remember your why you're there in the first place yeah um i think that's really good um remembering the why is very important i think to kind of add to that 
what I had to realize is, um, so I had a, for a research study that I was a part of and I volunteered um, as a research assistant, the principal investigator, um, which is basically the person who was responsible for the, for conducting the study at large, um, she had a, a conversation with the team one day and she said, you know, um, you have to be a hundred percent committed to things if you want to see change, if you want to see how you're going to affect things and how you're going to influence things. And so that resonated with me because I think sometimes as a student, we get so caught up in, you know, I got to do this and I have to do that. You know, I have to, um, you know, volunteer and I have to go do research. I have to go do all of these amazing things. I have to build my resume. But all the while, never really being immersed into what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And I think fully immersing yourself into your craft, into your field, whatever that is, will help you stay motivated because your mind is always turning. You know, you have to go look beyond the degree, look beyond the class, you know, connect yourself with people who are doing what you want to do one day, you know, connect yourself with people who are doing amazing things in your field, you know, um, look for opportunities to learn more and to serve in your field. And that's one thing that I've been able to do. I um, just went above and beyond what was required of me as a student. I went to class, but I also worked. I also gained public health experience. Um, I also volunteered and gained more public health experience. I also was a part of um, other programs that gave me more experience outside of my degree program. I um, just did a lot of different things to fully immerse myself in the field. And yeah, I'm still learning. I'm still growing. It's, there's so much more to learn and to do, but it helps me to stay motivated because I know there is more to learn and more to do, you know? So to add to what Ben was saying, I would say, you know, find out what your why is. You have to remember why you're there. And in doing that, you have to immerse yourself into whatever it is so that you can be reminded of that why. Wow. I feel demotivated. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, 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 very, very um, inspirational, you know, um, the both of you uh, sharing your your victories, your challenges, you know, uh, you know, drops of wisdom and knowledge uh, that if it, if this interview was for anyone, it was for me. Um, you know, <laughs> even you know, I, I, I mentioned it to um, in the in the first episode that this, you know, these principles you guys are talking about, you know, it goes, you know even beyond, you know, just getting a degree in STEM, you know, the, the, you know, you can take these principles and apply it to life itself, um, it, which is why I love <laughs> interviewing you guys. This is so, um, it, it, it's so, it, 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 it's more than just one area of your life. And, you know, I, um, I really appreciate both of you uh, for, um, coming on and doing this podcast uh, with me. To, uh, again, I feel like I'm learning so, so much that I'm sure that anyone who's viewing this uh, will probably feel, uh, definitely probably feels the same way. Uh, do you both uh, have any final, any final thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, um, briefly, I just you know, wanted to say, um, you know, to anyone listening, you know, if you're interested in STEM, um, go for it. You know, don't, don't allow any challenge, including yourself, to keep you from pursuing what you want to pursue. It's going to be hard, but you can still do it. You can figure out how to get what you want and, it'll be good. It'll be worth it. You know, think about the people that you will impact because 
you decided that there was something greater, there's something more on the other side of your pondering, on the other side of your worrying, will it work? Can I do it? What if I fail? What if I, you know, just keep going, you know? So that's all I wanted to say. If ifs and buts were candy and nuts, oh, what a party we'd had. You just got to do it. You know, like Nike says, just do it. I mean, you know, don't, you can, over, you can get analysis paralysis by overthinking stuff. Just go out there and do it. Go find, you know, go find the scholarships, go find the grants, go to the office hours, show up to class, show up to class, show up to class. <laughs> um, even if you don't feel like it, you know, stay focused, you know, it, in, enjoy the college life, be involved in clubs, be part of the community. You know, if you're, if you want to be Greek, be Greek, you know, but don't let it, you know, overwhelm your life. You know, honestly, the biggest thing to me is you have to have a purpose for going before you get there. I think you might not know what you want to do with your career, but you better have a purpose for being at college, period. If you don't have that, then there's really, you know, take some time, wait, don't go, don't go immediately. So I say all that just to say, um, you can do it. You can do it for anybody listening who's trying to just find a, a resource about like, how did I make it or can I make it? You can make it. Trust me, them people you think are extremely smarter than you, they're not. They're not. They're making it up too. Okay. Yeah. No, really, literally, I, literally, they're making it up too, and they're wrong a lot. So that's okay. That's the other. That's the biggest thing about STEM, though. Specifically, you're gonna be wrong a lot. You're gonna screw up a lot. Remember, Alfred Nobel blew his brother up. Okay. You know when he invented dynamite. So all I'm saying is like, I mean. <laughs> It's morbid, but I mean, it is what it is. If you're going to be in the sciences, if you're going to be in technology, English, math, mathematics, oh, English, mathematics, yeah. But if you're going to oh, be in mathematics. English is important. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to be in STEM. You are going to screw up. It's going to be okay. And, you know, you're going to learn. So. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, and I'm sure the all the engineering um, students are probably loving um, you getting the E right in STEM. Um, but uh, uh, again, thank you guys so much for uh, being on this. And um, I didn't ask prior to the interview, but if someone is like very, very, feels very, very encouraged by um, what both of you have said, um, do you mind um giving out your email um if someone has like questions if you could just like say how um what the best way to reach you is sure um so yeah i'm happy to answer um any questions um you know especially anything related to uh public health and um, pre-med, being on the pre-med track. So you can contact me at Ariana, A-R-I-A-N-N-A-M, as in man, S as in snake, B as in boy, at gmail.com. And my name is Ariana. The best way to contact me is to go to mindbrewingtutoringco.org. Um, that's my website for all the tutoring that I do, but also my information is on there. Um, I guess the easiest email to get me at is uh, bpbrooks95 at gmail.com. But honestly, just go to that um, or connect with me on Facebook or, or what have you, so. Oh yes, I did. Uh, I, I did not mention that at the very, very beginning. I probably should have at the intro, but um, Deacon Ben has, a YouTube page that all it is, it's just tutoring. You know, it's just him going through, you know, questions that you probably have in terms of math and calculus. I saw some calculus in there, you know. So I I will um, 
I will definitely just link, if you don't mind me just linking your Absolutely. channel um, yeah. in the description, uh, if you want to see some uh, tutorials uh, on uh, in, in calculus and other types of math that he does. Um, they're really, really good. So absolutely, absolutely. Again, thank you both so much for um, being uh, being on this uh, this podcast. Uh, I know that uh, someone definitely is going to be blessed by uh, by listening to this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Yes. Thank you for inviting us on. All righty. Uh, again, um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And um, Lord willing, I will. Um, I will see you in the uh, the next. Video. I'll see you. Uh, you two guys in the next uh, video. Sure. Absolutely.